What's going on? I'm in Colleen, Texas right now. A truck. This channel I just decided to start because I have a lot of friends and people that are from where I'm from that have questions from time to time about truck driving. And um, a lot of the friends that I have come from a rough background or they're trying to find a way out of poverty and they're trying to find a way, the quickest road you can get to get yourself out of the bucket, you know, the crab in a bucket effect. And let me give you a little history about me. I live in Wichita, Kansas. And uh, before that, I, I was raised in the system in Texas as a kid. I didn't have no mom or dad. They gave me up when I was nine or 10. And I got in a lot of trouble in, in and out of boys' homes and foster homes. And then I got placed into the system. And then I went from there to graduating into doing more fucked up shit as an adult and found myself in and out of the penitentiary, the Department of Corrections system, work release, whatever you want to call it. And where we have, we have work release, we got uh, uh, community corrections, field services, all that shit. So I done done all that shit. Uh, in my heart, I'm a good man, but when you in that bucket, you cannot find uh, a way out. You don't know how to get out of that. Uh, I don't have a GED. I don't have no education. I don't have nothing. Uh, I'm a good hustler. Uh, I found on later out later out in li uh, life that I could con people if I had to. Uh, I got caught up for a couple robberies. Uh, I had a real bad habit of putting my hands on people. Uh, luckily, I hadn't put my hands on the right person yet, and I'm still standing here, and they ain't shot and killed me yet. Or I ain't done something to somebody and ended up in prison. I would say that's probably by the grace of the Lord that I'm still here today. Uh, if you look me up on the internet, Earl Cadillac Hunter, you'll see my picture. Back in 2006, I found a way from, I worked two jobs. I was working at a nursing home, washing dirty linen and mopping floors. And, and in the daytime, I was working at the car wash, wiping cars down. And this is way back in when I first got out of uh, the system. And, uh, it was, you know, it was kind of hard, man. It was long, long hours. The whole day I'm, I'm just feeling like, I don't know if you ever had that feeling. I'm just feeling like there's something more. I'm supposed to be doing something else. Somehow there's money passing me by while I'm sitting here riding the clock for minimum wage. Uh... And, and, and it would cause me to lose my job from time to time because I deal with a disrespectful ass boss or some fucked up ass bullshit going on at this minimum wage ass job that they're not paying me enough for to deal with, okay? So what I get at is, is that it, it made things hard on me. Uh, you know, uh, trying to figure out what I'm gonna do, no education, no skills, no nothing that I can actually use to get myself out of the hole. I came across a little deal. Uh, I got some gold teeth in my mouth. They're my permanent ones. I had them put in years ago by a dentist. And I ran across this Iranian cat, and he was telling me about these grills in Texas. Now, I'm from South Texas, and I ain't never seen that shit when I, in the 80s when I was down there. I'm 46, and back in the 80s when I was down in South Texas, they didn't have all that shit. So when this guy was asking me if those were... he. He, well, let me just skip to the thing. He kind of explained to me about the grills. And so I invested some money and sent some money out to New York. Uh, and uh, I saw some guys locally who started selling them. And I bought some and I tried them. Put them in my mouth and found out how they worked, how they stayed in your mouth. So I started selling them. And uh, that was, I thought I had found my niche. I thought that was... Cause I was good at it. I mean, I was really good at it. And you find something you like to do and something you would buy, it's easy to, you know, do something with it. But me being in Kansas and not in Texas or Florida or Louisiana, you know, that shit came and went. It lasted for a few years. It lasted long enough for me to make a couple of intelligent decisions. I made one was to get my record expunged cause I've been off of parole long enough that I could do that. 
So I took about $3,500 and got my record expunged. And then I was like, what am I going to do now? I got that done. What's the next big move here? And I decided to, after I met a guy out of Chicago uh, who convinced me, man, you should drive semis. You should drive trucks. I said, man, I ain't never even seen the inside of one of these motherfuckers. Not alone drove it. He was like, man, that's what you need in your life. You know, it's very minimum supervision. You don't got somebody leaning over your shoulder. You know, it's just a lot of responsibility and, 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 and trust. And, and, you know, for a guy like me to get anybody's trust, it was hard, you know. So I thought, you know, that's what I want. If that's the way to do it, then that's what I'm going to do. So I went and got my CDL. It cost me about 4500 bucks at the time. I went to a local school that was, uh, that was doing them. Uh, long story short, man, it was the best thing I had ever done at the time. I didn't realize it. When I first started doing truck driving, I worked for a company called Trans Am Trucking. They haul meat and stuff like out of the Kansas City area all the way over to, uh, to uh, fucking uh, uh, L.A. I mean, they go everywhere. Okay. So with that being said, I uh, tried it. Man, I couldn't have been out there but a couple months, man. It was so hard, man. I was, I ain't gonna lie, man. I was scared. I'm driving a big-ass truck. I'm going through New York, New Jersey. I mean, the rules and all the, I mean, back then they didn't have uh, GPSs. We talking about 2006 and 2007. Uh, they didn't have a lot of that shit. And the, the ones they did were for cars. Uh, so... Uh, those would get me in trouble, you know, so it was really following the Qualcomm, which is the computer that's in the truck, and it gives you directions. Hey, get on I-80, head west, look for exit 32, get off at of exit 32, head, you know, uh, fucking to the east, look for this exit, and it was just a lot of directions. A lot of stuff going on on that computer that just fucking intimidated me at first, you know. Uh, so, you know, I... I I ran late a couple of times to some appointments, and I remember one time I got to a Walmart warehouse, and I was so tired that I fell asleep in the driveway waiting to go into this place. And I was behind three or four other trucks, and I was kind of proud of myself that I had made it there. And, you know, I was like, okay, I'm here. You know, uh, let's see let's see what happens. And I, my stupid ass fell asleep in the seat, and the next morning, guess what? I was too late. And when I got up to the thing and tried to go in, they said, no, nah, man, you got to wait till tomorrow because you're too late. So I had to learn a lot of lessons that were kind of costly and I wasn't making a lot of money. I think my first check was fucking zero. My next check was like 60 bucks for the week. I was like, this, this is crazy. I blamed all my problems on, on, on the system, on the, on the trucking. I thought they was trying to fuck me around. And man, I wasn't down with that shit. I was like, fuck that. You're not fixed to get me like that. So I go back to doing what I was doing. Because I remember one day I fell asleep on the side of the road and put my face in the steering wheel. I was so motherfucking tired. Well, with all that said, man, you know, uh, I quit doing it. I went back to went back to where I live. And I went back to, you know, what I do best, you know, stealing and breaking in high, uh, construction sites and doing shit like that. And, uh, you know, that shit wasn't, uh, you know... I realized, man, you got your record expunged. This is not what you want to be doing. You know this ain't what you about. You know you was looking for that break. I mean, we don't want to fuck up all that money we done spent on, on, on you know, doing, on getting your record expunged. I didn't know what to do, man. I, I, I kind of prayed about it. Uh, you know, they always tell you God's going to speak to you. And I, I always get confused about that shit. Like, is he, I don't, am I going to hear a voice? I mean, is he going to? Throw an arrow in front of me. I mean, I couldn't figure it out. But I asked him to guide me, and, and maybe he did. I don't know. You know, maybe it was because I'm here. You know. So with that being said, I, I, I you know, I, 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 I'll be honest. That one night I sat there and I, I was sitting out in my car and I was sitting there crying and, to, you know, I didn't let nobody else see me crying. Of course, but I'm trying to figure out as a man what is it I'm supposed to be doing. Why can I not find the, the right path why can I not do right when the right is in my heart but I can't do right nobody's gonna give me a chance nobody's gonna give me a shot I'm not gonna get out this fucking bucket and 
you know, I said, you know what? I got to go back to that truck. I got to go back and I got to put both feet in that motherfucker. And, 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 and I got to, I got to prove that I was right about leaving because I seen too many other guys making money and I'm like, there's something I'm doing wrong and I got to go back and figure out what it is. And sometimes we're so quick to blame everything else and not take a real good, honest look at, at what we're doing. You know, what is it I need to do? You know, I had to kiss a little ass to get back in. So I got back in with some, you know, with some guys. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to lie. They were a little bit on the, on the, you know, redneck side, you know, and they didn't, you know, care for me too much, but they needed the driver. And it's not every day you see a white boy with gold teeth and his wife's black, and then you got to deal with some racist dude at the job. And it was kind of hard at first, you know. And, you know, I, I kind of heard some things that here and there I, try, I had to overlook, and I didn't want to do it. Now, that, that was with the personal, I, I, I got to be honest, that was with some guys that were just, that's the way they live. That's, that's their personality. It ain't right for goddamn sure, but, you know, they were the only ones willing to give me a shot. And I, you know, I, I told them, I said, hey, I, I don't care what your belief is. I just don't want to hear it. And it worked okay for a while, but every once in a while, something would slip. And, you know, after a few weeks, I realized that I didn't want to hear no more of that shit. And the guy kind of mouthed off to me the wrong way one day. And I finally just let him have it for everything that I'd been hearing. But I got my foot back in the door and, and I had a little more experience now. So what did I do? I went out there on the road. I went to another company. I went to a bigger company. A bigger company, you're not going to deal with a lot of that. You know, uh, this co that company there was some guys that had been driving since they was 10 years old, and it was just them and their brother. You know, but when you get to these big companies, you're not dealing with that type of issue. So I went with a, another small company first, a medium-sized company. It was bigger than them two guys. And that worked out pretty good. I was going to L.A. every week, and I started picking up my pace, and I I really just put my heart in it, man. I, I had, I didn't have no choice. You know, sometimes you get to that situation and you go, look, man, if you don't make it, you're gonna, you're not gonna survive. You know, and I don't have a family to go to. I don't have nobody to take care of me. If something happened, I can't go stay at my mama's house. I don't have none of those luxuries. And on top of that, I got a family that I'm taking care of, a woman with three kids and I got my brother living with me. So I did it. I went out there and I pushed that shit and I made it happen. And I found out all of my flaws and all my mistakes. And I had to learn, you know, I had to learn everything. I was gearing up, I was going up mountains and wondering why my truck was trying to die out on me all the time. I needed to gear down. I mean, I was really that ignorant. I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I was ignorant than a motherfucker. I had to learn everything. But it made me a better man. And here I am today, what is this, 13 something years later, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad that, you know, I, I went back. You know, now I have my own truck. I have, if you look up ECP Transportation, it's owned by me, Earl Hunter. You know, uh, I have other, other things that I'm having to learn about now. You know, I had to learn about my taxes. I had to learn about, you know, filing an annual report and all the different things you have to do as a business owner. So, uh, I leave out of my house every you know, week, and I might not be coming back for a week, week and a half, but everything is in my control. This is the most legit legal hustle there is for a person like myself that ain't, ain't got no skills. Uh, you got some drive, you got some uh, momentum, you got some hustle in you, and you, you want to do something legitimate and straight. Um, this is an opportunity, uh, I go from LA to New York. I don't have to go to New York. I do a lot of West Coast. I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of I-80. I do a lot of Wyoming in the winter. It's real fucked up. A lot of truck drivers that may look at this video that are more advanced than me, but they one thing we can all agree on is I-80 is fucked up. And I go on there once a week. You know, I go right on through there. I got my times down. I learned how to. I learned a lot of stuff. I learned a lot of things about big rigs that I didn't know nothing about. You know, uh, I do my, I a lot of, sometimes I do my own oil changes and do little, you know, repairs on my truck. <coughs> but this is my truck. 
You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, uh, this is me. Uh, I got with a decent company. Every company has some type of flaw. Uh, everybody can tell you one or two things that they didn't see um, uh, about the company. They can tell you it's the worst. And there, and there might be. And sometimes those people will come and go that, that, that cause those problems at the company. The company I'm with now, I'm going to be honest, it has its ups and downs. But, you know, it's not that far. I mean, sometimes I... You know, I'm, I'm a guy that don't give somebody an inch because I've learned over my lifetime I have a lot of distrust issues, and if you, if I give you an inch or two, you'll take a foot. So I look at problems a lot worse or sometimes than they are, and then sometimes later on I'm able to go back and reflect on them. But the guy that owns this company, Air Capital, he has two sons that run it. Uh, the guy himself, the main guy, Lou, uh, is... I, I mean, man, I remember one day I came up to the property. These guys got probably over 100 trucks and probably 200 trailers. And I remember I showed up one day and uh, he uh, was mowing the grass. I never would have known that was the owner of the company. He owns warehouses. And I mean, we're talking about a millionaire, I'm sure, at least. And never would have thought that was him out there mowing the grass. The guy started out small himself with a box truck and just a hustler. But when you see him without talking to him, you would think that he's one of them rich people that's sadiddy, but farthest from the truth. A uh, man sold me this truck. He sold me a house. And I mean, any motherfucker can walk in there and talk to him. He doesn't shield anybody away. And we're talking about a dude that builds big ass warehouses over here in Kansas. And so for the trust that I, for, for, from the respect that I had for him, I had to learn to tone my attitude down a lot, especially when I'm talking to him and, and not make him see the worst in me. And the man gave me a shot and sold me a truck. He, he sells it, everybody trucks. You know, there's a lot of, some people say don't do the owner operator lease thing. If there's a company to do it with, it's this one. They don't do none of that chicken shit ass where you have to pay a, a balloon note at the end. I make my payments. I got $5,000 in interest on this fucking truck. It's a 2014 Freightliner Cascadia. It's got the APU on it. And I paid $40,000 for it. And that was about two years ago. It uh, pays off here in November. Um, so what I'm getting at is, is that this was a company that, yes, I've seen some problems here. But I'm not perfect either. I've, I've, I've done some fucked up shit too. And sometimes before we say something about somebody else and what they fucking doing, especially if it's not detrimental, we need to work on ourselves. And I've had to do a lot of working on myself. Had a lot of, you know, I'm still working on myself today. There's still a lot of things that I'm not happy with about myself. You know, one thing truck driving does is it gives you a lot of time to reflect on yourself and others that you need to make sure that you manage the other's part. Because you can find yourself all day long thinking about all the fucked up shit everybody else does. The reality of it is I've bought a lot of audio books. And I've, lot of, I've gotten a lot of education the last 13 years of driving trucks. I've educated the shit out of myself. And learned a lot. Not just from putting hands on. I'm a hands on kind of guy. But also from the books that I've been listening to. And how to you know, better myself in life. And how to make myself a better person. This job here has let me be my own boss and it has done a lot done away with a lot of the micromanaging you know they're not going to babysit you and hold your hand you know they tell you hey i need you to pick this load up in houston and i need you to take it to las vegas this is the address and it's up to you to man the fuck up and grab your fucking nuts and get up and do what the fuck you're supposed to do now that i've done kind of laid out, out everything what i can say is is that this is a channel that i'm going to do a lot of talking about uh you know, uh, I'm talking to people like me. If you're not me and you're one of those guys that is su a super trucker and all that bullshit, then uh, ignore my channel. I'm not for you. Uh, I'm, I'm below you. you I, I'm going to tell you now, you don't need to waste your time with your negative comments and all that other fucked up shit. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people like myself that have came from uh, a little different world than you are in obviously so don't waste your time with all your fucking criticisms and all the fucking talking shit and, and and how tough you are and i don't give a fuck about none of that i i really don't so and and, and the guys that that, that that i'm talking to they'll know it they know it because when they hear me talking they feel it 
You know, they, they, they know where I'm coming from and they know where they are. Those are the ones I'm talking to. Everybody else, I don't want to waste your time. I'll just tell you that right up front. But if you want to find a way out of your situation that you're in, in life, okay, and you're trying to find somebody that's not perfect, but that, that, that's actually walked that fucking mile, that's me, okay? I'm still learning today. We can learn together. I don't, you know, that I, I still got a lot to learn myself. But I'm trying to reach down and grab some people that are on the ground still laying down, at least stand them up with me. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I don't care what trucking company you go to. I really don't. If you come to my company, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get a fucking uh, a, a, a referral bonus for bringing you here. I'm going to be very upfront with you. But if you complete your time here, what I've done with my referral bonuses is I split them with you. Yeah, that's what the fuck I do. So if they give me a $500 bonus, I'll split that down the middle with you. Um, and you can find out how much the bonus is because, I mean, you can make an anonymous call any day to find out if I'm bullshitting you or not. Uh, this company is not perfect. They, 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 they do some things, but I can tell you how to get around those issues and, and how to handle them who to talk to and how to talk to them. Um, this is a very good company to start out with. Uh, and if you wanna get your own truck and go out on your own and do your own thing, and then, then this would be a good company for that as well. Uh, but as far as you coming to this truck, this is not what this channel is about. What this channel is about is, I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not, sometimes when you're teaching somebody else, you're actually teaching yourself uh, there was a there's a saying I can't remember the saying but sometimes when teaching others it, it, it makes you a wiser person yourself you know sometimes you can hear what you're saying and and, and you you have a chance to reflect on it and you look back and say hey man I, that's something I didn't think about and it, it kind of jars your, your thought process a little bit uh, sometimes when you're reaching out with somebody else with positivity good things come to you and that's true um, so what I'll say is this is the first video of this channel that I want to put on there. Uh, you know, uh, so if you, you you never thought about driving trucks or think it's not impo it's impossible. Hell, I remember there was <laughs> there was about six years I didn't have a license. My driver's license was suspended, and they told me the craziest fucking thing in the world. They said, "Oh, you need fifteen hundred dollars to get your fucking license back." Fifteen hundred dollars to me, you know, fifteen twenty years ago was like. Fifteen hundred dollars is like fifteen thousand. There's no way in the world I'm gonna get this fucking money to get my license, and I didn't even try. I just, you know, and then some blessings came along, and and, and some hustles came up, and all of a sudden I had the money. Then when I go pay them, I'm all excited, and I'm gonna be able to not have to be watching my mirror when I'm, you know, uh, us people who have license that don't have licenses are some of the best drivers. So you know they. They say, oh, they must be driving fucked up. No, the opposite. We're the best. We know all the rules of the road. We're always trying to follow them. But what I will say is this, is that they, I gave them the $1,500, and they told me I was going to have to wait three years to get my fucking license back after I paid all the fines. I couldn't even believe it. I paid the fines and I went on about my life, you know, watching my rear view mirror. And before I knew it, the three years was up. And uh, here I am today, you know, driving truck. So uh, driving the truck, they have automatics. They don't have to be manual, stick shift. You can get automatic. They got a s beds in them, refrigerators. You can put TVs in them, microwave, uh, everything. You know, if you did any time in the penitentiary, that little cell you lived in, well, this is, uh, uh, this ain't shit to you then. You can handle this easy. This is easy. And the freedom you have and the money you will be making, uh, man, it's really your choice what you're going to make, really, in the end. You get one or two years into this, you can write your own ticket pretty much. I mean, within reason, within the industry, within the reasons of the industry. So uh, there's a lot of times that 
Uh, right now, this trucking is in very serious demand. And I'm going to tell you something. This is an opportunity to pull yourself out of the bucket. You don't have to stay driving trucks. You just get you out of the bucket and get you on land and get you get you straight. And then you can go from there. Or you may like what you see. You may like being out here. Uh, uh, you know, this is just a road to where I'm going. Am I going to be doing this forever? No. But this was a hell of a blessing that got me out of being incarcerated all the time. It kept me from being killed myself, being a victim of somebody else's fucking... Uh, uh, greediness and uh, and it also kept me from making a mistake that I, I would have to live with for the rest of my life you know maybe I maybe I do something to somebody else so what I can say is is that if you want to get out of the bucket and you want to do something different and you turn around and you're watching this video and you may have your family sitting just right across from you or you might be late night, like I was many a times, up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the fucking morning trying to figure out what I'm going to do to take care of my family. And I'm looking at them laying in the bed next to me. I'm looking at my wife, you know, kids. And I, it's my job to figure this out. It's my job to stand the fuck up and figure out what I'm going to do to take care of these people. You know, no matter what wrong I've got to, I, I've got to do, i got to make it happen. Well, I'm going to show you a right way to do it that can at least get you on your feet, at least give you an opportunity. Uh, I have a company that I can recommend, and if you don't like it, it's okay. At least you got your foot in the door. But I can tell you that, you know, they always say the grass is green on the other side, but that's not true. Every time you get over there, you'll find something wrong with that company too. And sometimes it's just getting your foot in the door and getting your experience together and being humble and trying to humble yourself and get, you know, get your feet on the ground. This company is a small enough company that they don't look at you as a number. They know who the fuck you are. When I call in, they call me Cadillac. So when I call in, they go, oh, that's Cadillac. They know exactly who I am. I don't have the best reputation in the world with the, with the company because I, I, don't let, I, don't, I don't let nothing slide, and I'm quick to speak up. And sometimes there's some things I got to work on as well. You know, sometimes it's nothing wrong with speaking up. It's the way you do it. But what I can say is I will be posting more videos for you guys to see and, and willing to answer any question you got, anything you want to know. You know, if I don't got the answer, I'm going to find it. You know, if you haven't found it yet, then, you know, I can't do you no wrong. You know, I'm a little further along maybe than you are if I'm talking to the right person. And I, if I can't find the answer, I'll sure as hell... I mean, if I don't have it, I sure as hell will find it for you. So, uh, I'll put my phone number out there. It's 316-871-9461. 316-871-9461. You need to get the information on what, how you can go from zero to even getting in line to get into a truck. It's going to take time, but it will not ever happen if you don't get up and make a phone call or get up and even just, it starts the, as simple as getting up and putting your pants on and your shoes on and walking out that fucking door. Go down to the corner, catch the fucking bus if you don't got a ride. Go down here where I'm going to tell you to go. Okay? And and, 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 I, and I'll show you how to do it. Um, there may be ways for you to even do it and not have to pay for your license. You get it for free. Okay? There's programs. They'll pay for you to go. Uh, the money is anywhere from two to four thousand dollars minimum a fucking month. A minimum. Two thousand being very, very, very minimum. I mean, that's probably when you first start. I mean, I, my, my my shit. I'm not gonna lie to you. My last deposit in my account for me was thirty eight hundred. Okay, for two weeks. That's for two weeks. Okay. 3800 and a company guy i mean you can easily see two thousand dollars every couple of weeks so four or five thousand a month would be the average uh that i've seen and that's for a person who gets out there and handles his business you don't have to break yourself and but you gotta stop being a big old i mean i don't want to say it i don't want to discourage you but you can't act like a bitch you got to get up and have the same heart that you do when you out there on the corner block bending or you out there selling dope are you out there living off your, these different kids' mamas and, 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 and 
you know, smoking weed and drinking and getting out there doing, getting your thug on, banging, whatever. You that shit is not gonna pay you the way this will, and not having to worry about looking over your shoulder. So if you can get out there and be brave and put your life on the line, you know, out on the street, well, this here is really putting your life on the line on the street. Get out here and get on this road and get paid and be able to provide for your family because they'll look at you a completely different way. They will look at you a complete different way than they do now. Okay? So, that's it.